Hey everybody, John Abdo here, author of Wolves of Croton, The Untold Story of Milo. I mentioned this in one of my previous presentations, why the book is so big. And originally I was thinking it's going to be 150, maybe 220 pages or whatever, which was the general outline of it. But the reason why it grew so much, as I mentioned in the previous presentation. Milo had these great relationships with these people like King Darius, Pythagoras, Caliphon and Democrates, Timotheus, and then his god Zeus, Apollo, Poseidon, and Hercules. So I just wanted to write the whole backstory on there, not only the relationships he had with mortal people and obviously his gods, but what was the culture of Croton, the Olympiad Games, being an Olympiad wrestling victor multiple times wearing the sacred crown. In this presentation, I want to talk about another game changer. I talked about the Hoplitodromos, which I presented a, a short presentation. And in an upcoming live presentation, I'm going to go into more detail on the Hoplitodromos, which is the race in armor. But this particular one is a game changer that actually happened before the Hoplitodromos, which the Hoplitodromos happened in 520 BC at Milo's 65th Olympiad Games, when Milo was approximately 39 years of age. This one was against finger breaking. Some have undervalued the famed strength of Milo the Cretonian. Relating thus of him, none of Milo's antagonists were able to force away a pomegranate, which he held in his hand. We know Milo performed many strength feats with his hands and fingers. Some say he held out his hand and people would grab his hand. Not just one person, but five different people would grab four fingers and a thumb and they couldn't even bend it. It was like grabbing onto ironwood or baobab branches. Milo uh, held out a closed hand over a pomegranate. No one could remove the pomegranate. They couldn't move his thumb. If he flexed his elbow, they couldn't even bend his elbow or anything like that. Milo, the wrestler, would stand with his arm at his side, his elbow against him, and hold out his hand with thumb pointed upwards and fingers spread. No one could successfully bend even his little finger. So Milo had tremendous hand strength, above other things, and the reason why he's able to carry a bull right? So you would think that this guy who can carry a bull and had this hand strength, and, and there's so many different historical accounts about Milo's hand strength, finger bending, trying to finger bend Milo's fingers, bend his hand, bend his wrist, bend his elbow, things like that. Milo's hands were so strong that when he seized a chariot, even with one hand only, four horses could not make it stir until he let it go. In 524 BC, which was announced at the previous Olympiad Games in 528 BC, they announced new officiating credo for the upcoming Olympiad Games, which is coming up in 524 BC, that they're going to rule against finger breaking. Any wrestler who performs a technique that breaks a finger, whether intentional or non-intentional, even if it's not intentional, it's still going to be appealed by his coaches and trainers. That wrestler who breaks the finger or fingers of another wrestler will be disqualified. So knowing that Milo had this power where he's got all this hand strength, you would think he's just mauling guys inside the pit. It's probably like an epilogue to what he was doing inside the pit. And obviously he was probably breaking other bones. So Milo was performing all these different feats inside the pit. And he says, hey, Milo. No more finger breaking. Let's clean up your brawny wrestling style and make it more a finesse because wrestling was the most governed of all the combat sports. Boxing was really brutal. They wanted to keep it that way. That was the blood sport. The second blood sport was pancreation, but wrestling was the most governed. And to just give you an idea, boxing debuted at the Olympiad Games in 688 B.C., where the games were founded in 776 BC, Hercules supposedly founded the games. Pancration was 40 years later in 648 BC. But prior to all of that, wrestling was the sport that was instituted into the Olympiad Games in 708 BC. So since 708 BC to 5. 
24 BC, they allowed all these different types of wrestling maneuvers, brawny maneuvers, finger breaking, and everything else to be acceptable within the match. But again, the board or the committee that was governing Olympiad wrestling rules wanted to rule against finger breaking. And I really think, which I did a lot of research in, obviously, I really think that Milo had a huge influence, not that he wanted to, or his coaches wanted to, or his teammates wanted to, a huge influence against finger breaking. And not that finger breaking meant a difference to Milo. He was breaking other bones to begin with anyway. So knowing that there was a rule against finger breaking, Philostratus, Milo's coach, immediately started to institute different training techniques that prevented his athletes, particularly Milo, the man who you couldn't bend his finger, open his finger or bend it to allow him to avoid any type of finger breaking, even get close to finger breaking. He said if an athlete would come at you and a lot of them did use these fake eye poking techniques. So you would kind of like flinch away or whatever. They'd wave hands in front of your eyes to kind of like block your vision and they would duck in for a, a double or single leg takedown or some type of other, other offensive maneuver. So instead of swatting at the hand, Philostratus wanted his athletes to swat it at the wrist or just forearm them upward and go in for a more technical wrestling maneuver. So I believe Milo played a huge influence. His mangling and breaking of bones in all the other previous Olympiad games. Remember in 524 BC, Milo had competed and won three previous Olympiad titles. So this is 12 going on 16 years of dominance. Prior to that, the 540 World Youth Games. So at least 20 years of dominance, and they're saying, hey, how can we get into the pit? We just move our hands. Milo grabs our hands because we're trying to keep our body away from him. He grabs our hands, breaks our fingers, and renders us literally <laughs> out of the match. So it really wasn't the remedy that all the other wrestlers were looking for, but the alien committee had to do something to make it more fair against the brawny, feral, wild, overbearing power of Milo or Croton. And from that point on, Milo really did take a more serious commitment. He became a technician. And instead of all brawn where he's grabbing guys and just crushing their rib cages and breaking their hands and other bones and stuff like that, he really did take on some really great wrestling adroitness uh, thanks to Philostratus, his head wrestling coach, and Chiapanan, his grandfather, who was assistant wrestling coach. So it's a great story. One of the reasons why the book got so big, there's a lot of stories, side stories, back stories, front stories, top and bottom stories that I want to put into Wolves of Croton, the untold story of Milo. If you are enjoying this content, please like, follow, share, and subscribe. And I'll continue to bring you more fascinating information on Milo of Croton and other great mythological and mortal figures from antiquity. I'm John Abdo, thanking you for watching. Stay strong and healthy, and perhaps one day, thousands of years from now, people then will be remembering your name as well.